Redstone is an incredibly useful part of Minecraft, and it's an aspect of the game that not a lot of players know much about. So that's why I decided to make this series of videos taking a deep dive on all the different Redstone components, starting with this video. So in this video, we'll explore what I'm calling the basic power components, or some of the components that create redstone signals. So in order to understand what redstone signals are, we have to start with the most fundamental element of all redstone components, redstone dust. You can think of redstone dust as Minecraft's version of copper wire in real life. It carries an electrical signal that can be measured and used on the other side to interact with the world, such as turning on lights or opening a door. However, unlike copper wire, redstone dust has certain limitations. For example, it can only carry a signal up to a certain distance. This distance is defined by its signal strength. The maximum signal strength is 15, meaning a redstone line can only transmit power for 15 blocks before losing its charge and becoming unpowered again. So let's dive into some of the blocks that create these redstone signals. So jumping right in, let's start with the redstone block, perhaps the simplest redstone component of them all. <laughs> the redstone block does one thing and one thing only, and that is it powers adjacent redstone components. So if you put a redstone dust next to it, it will be powered by the redstone block. One unique thing about the redstone block is it's the only redstone component that can be moved with pistons, but we'll talk about more about pistons in a different video. So if you don't want to move your redstone block away from your redstone line with a piston, then you might consider using a lever. A lever will power your redstone line adjacent to it when it's turned on, and it will also strongly power the block that it's attached to. So when I say strongly powered, all I mean is that the redstone signal is able to travel through the block to the other side. So if you put a lever on one side of the block and then dust on the other side and flip the lever, the redstone power goes through the block powering the redstone even though there's a block in between it. That's what I mean by strongly powered. Weakly powered means something marginally different. It only means that redstone dust won't be powered, but all other components will. So it's good to know those terms, but moving right along um, to the button. The button functions almost exactly the same as the lever, except it automatically turns off after a certain time. So for example, if you'd like to use a button to open an iron door, it will close after a second. Whereas if you were to use a lever, the door would remain open indefinitely until you go and flip the lever again. So one th more thing about buttons is that there are many variations. Uh, there are two sections of variations. One is wood and one is stone. And the only reason I make this distinction is because wood buttons last for one and a half seconds and stone variants last for one second. So if you want a half a second more to get through your door, make sure to use a wood button. Okay, so next up is the pressure plate, which w functions similarly to a button except Instead of pressing it, all you have to do is stand on it. So when you stand on a pressure plate, all of the adjacent redstone components are powered and it strongly powers the block it's placed on, meaning that you can put redstone dust under the floor, under the block that the pressure plate's on, and the pressure plate above it will send the signal through the block to power it below. Similar to buttons, pressure plates come in several variants as well. The most, by far, the most common types are wood and stone. Um, the only difference between wood and stone being floating items activate wood pressure plates, whereas they don't activate stone pressure plates. Otherwise, they function basically the same. But gold and iron pressure plates are a little bit more complicated, but they're rarely seen in general redstone machines, so if you don't understand, that's all right. You probably will never see them. Essentially, a gold pressure plate will emit a redstone signal proportional to the number of entities on it. So for example, if you stand on it, it will emit a signal strength of one. If we were to get two people on the server and they were to stand on it, it would signal strength of two, it also detects entities. So you could toss a certain number of items and it will emit that signal strength up to the 15, of course. And then iron pressure plates work similarly, but in increments of 10 instead of one, put simply, 
So you need 10 items to have one signal strength, 20 to have two signal strength, etc. Again, they're not very common, so if, if that didn't make any sense to you, you probably won't ever need that information. Next, let's talk about the detector rail. Think of the detector rail as a regular rail combined with a pressure plate. So for example, when a minecart rolls over it, the detector rail activates and sends a, a redstone signal, as you can see here. I've used detector rails before to detect when a minecart is approaching to do things like turn on the lights or open a door so I can pass through. There are a few more uses for the detector rail, but I'll talk more about those in a deep dive video on movable components. So that brings us finally to the redstone torch. So when the redstone torch is placed down, it powers all adjacent redstone components. It also strongly powers the block directly above it. So you can put redstone dust on top of the block, on top of the redstone torch, and that redstone dust will be activated because that block is being strongly powered by the torch. The redstone torch also has a very unique and interesting feature where if the block it's attached to is powered, then the redstone torch will invert itself. It'll turn off if it's on and vice versa. This is a super useful feature because being able to invert your signals is crucial in most redstone machines. For example, if you had a piston door, you wanted the door to be extended by default and retract when you want to walk through it. So say you had pressure plates to activate it. You would want the signal from your pressure plates to be inverted, retracting the pistons, letting you through the door, and then closing it behind you. And although it seems simple, it's a very crucial feature in most redstone machines. So that will do it for the simple power component section of this series. In future videos, I'll take a deep dive into every other redstone component in Minecraft. Those categories will include a video on the advanced power components, transmission components, mechanism components, and mobile components. So if you're done with this one, you want to learn more, be sure to check those videos out. They are designed to be watched in order. So in the order that I just listed, start with this one and go down the list. Um, but I did break them up into separate videos so it would be easy to go back and review from time to time. So all that being said, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.